Welcome back to Glamour and Filters, hosted by me, Josh Smith, and today we're joined by Niall Horan. Hello, everyone. How Hello, everyone. are you? I'm great. Great to see you. So, new album. Yes. On the horizon. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this one. I was excited about the first one. Yeah. But now that I've lived with my new solo life for a little bit, <laughs> uh, I feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling more confident when I walk into the studio. Uh -huh. It could all go tits up and it could be game over. But I feel like I've written my yeah. best stuff and I'm just excited now. What do you think you've learned about yourself from the first album <laughs> to the second album? When I made the first album, it was probably 20, 22 or three, mm -hmm. maybe, 23. And the, the gap between 23 and 26 is a lot more. It's you, you, you look completely different, I feel. Hopefully I can hold on to the baby face for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, I feel like I matured a lot. Can you think of a specific turning point in your like journey of self-discovery, <laughs> which is such a big term, but has there been one? I feel like in the last, even in the last 18 months, two years, having, you know, a relationship and then that ending and then writing about that mm. and when it being like quite raw. I've like learned a lot about myself off the back of that. Even the type of album I wrote, usually I would have written like a quite selfish, like if I sit down and write a ballad, it's going to be sad and it's going to be about me. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I wrote that, when I started to come up with the concept for this album, I was thinking, you know, about all the different aspects of that breakup from other people's views, from the other person's view, the different phases of through that relationship. Whereas I wouldn't have done that before. You know, I've learned a lot about myself off the back of that relationship. And I feel like the last 18 months has really changed me as a person, I think. Yeah, I feel like I'm a bit more prepared for life. Yeah. <laughs> You have so much intense public scrutiny on you all the time. Yeah. You can pick up papers, read stories about yourself, most of it not true, mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to actually being a songwriter like yourself, because you are very personal and honest mm. in what you write, yeah, yeah. how difficult is that for you to marry the two together to keep something back for yourself, but then also be very truthful? Yeah, I, I try to be as honest as I can. Sometimes you nearly, not for anyone else, sometimes like I find myself sitting there and I, and I go, can I say that line? Or should I? Not because you, you're actually not thinking about it coming out at the time. When you're, mm. So you're sitting there writing it, you're thinking about, am I ready to say that? Mm. You know? Um, so you have to kind of push yourself. Um, but when you do, you, it feels more rewarding and you, mm. it clears that thought in your head. And I'm, I'm lucky that I've got that vehicle, songwriting as a vehicle to like clear the head. The public and, you know, parts of the media will like want to know who the song's about. That's the main thing. Mm. But that's a flash in the pan. That story's out the window after yeah. five minutes and everyone goes, oh, that song's about that person. It's just more the game of trying to figure out who it is. But then, as a songwriter, the best thing for me is when I play a show and I play a ballad or an, an honest one, and I look in the, the crowd and I see tears rolling down faces. Mm. They're not crying because of who I wrote the song about. They're crying it because they've related it back to something in their lives. Mm -hmm which is, for me, is the best thing. The story, the, the, like, who's the song about is the flash in the pan, it's mm. over in five minutes, and I won't be telling anyone anyway. But um, the real stuff is when the people have lived with the songs and connected with them in that way, and that's that's why I like try to be as honest as I can, because people relate. Because in that sense, it's not even about someone else, it's about you. Yeah, isn't yeah exactly. It? In yeah, your yeah. personal journey. Yeah. Because you have been on this insane personal journey, because I was actually thinking about this earlier, because I've never actually even thought about this fact about you. Because you've been in One Direction, you came on X Factor, so you've been kind of in like our cultural lives for such a long time. Yeah, yeah. But then I actually just thought today, you were actually a 16 year old boy. You yeah. like moved away from home. Yeah. And you were with these other guys, but basically on your own in a sense. Yeah. What was that like for you? All the parents had one thing in common in that band was that they all said that we just went to the audition, never came home type thing, mm. uh, which is true. You know, I moved country at 16. Um, I mean, to go on to do what I did was pretty pretty amazing. But um, at the time, I was like, whoa. Yesterday I was in school <laughs> yeah. and in a small town of about 20,000 people. And now I'm living in London in a band that, I mean, in hindsight, you know, went on to do what it did. But at the time, it was all a bit like, a bit crazy. How did you manage? growing up in that public eye. How difficult was that for you? To be fair, we had each other and I don't think people realise the power of that actually. Because mm. you know, you see solo stars and like I watched uh, Justin Bieber's new docuseries 
and you can see, you know, and a, and a guy you know quite well, and you know, you know how it affected him, and people didn't realise the, the pressure that he was under mm. or things like that. And I can relate to that 100%. But we were always lucky that we we had each other. I mean, he had his manager and the security guy. We had our manager and our security team and we, people, that, but we also had each other and each other to share the experience with. Um, and you know, I always, I always felt sorry for Justin in that, in that respect. You know, we came from simple backgrounds, but we, we all, we, you know, I think we had that in common, and it helped along the way. So when it was all going on around us, we were just kind of like in our little bubble, chatting about it, about how crazy it yeah. is, and couldn't believe where we were all the time. We never really seen ourselves as like these big celebrities. I think that was more of a out looking in type thing. We were just like in this little fishbowl, yeah, having a great time, and all the madness was going on mm. around us. And then when you came to being a solo artist. Mm -hmm. You're out there on your own. Yeah. How difficult was that for you to establish your own identity away from that group and create <laughs> your own identity away from it? Like, what was that experience like? Um, I was lucky because I knew. I mean, I like I'll never be complaining about the one D tag following mm -hmm. me around. Absolutely not. But um, I I was lucky. I always knew how my album would sound. Mm. Like I know what I'm into. I listen to the same music a lot of the time, same styles of music. Um. And I always kind of had a feeling if I was to make an album of my own, how it would sound. Mm. Just having that was half, the, you know, half the mm. battle, if you like. And I think as well, you're then also doing this and putting yourself out there at a time where social media is completely overwhelming everyone's yeah. lives, <laughs> yeah. uh, for the good, for the bad. How do you cope with the negative side of social media? And what has your experience of the negative side of social media been like? Personally, I'm quite thick-skinned. Mm. And I don't really like, I just know that it's some person bored off their head at home, just keyboard warrior, as we mm. always say. It's just, it feels like the vulnerable people, I hate watching it, like vulnerable people being taken down by keyboard mm. warriors. And I, I actually, I'm always tweeting about it, about how I think it's just ridiculous how people can just say what they want um, to each other. Because if I was to walk down Oxford Street, and just shout at someone and abuse people like they do on the online, I'd probably be arrested. Yeah. So um, that's everyone where I stand on that. Yeah, <laughs> but everyone just needs to be a bit kinder in that sense. Yeah. But we, got, but we spend so much time as well talking about the downsides of social media as well, but there's so many positive sides yeah. like you were saying as well. Because yeah. you have this amazing fandom yeah, that I is mean, literally supported you throughout. I always think like how big One Direction would have been if we didn't have it. Because mm. like, I mean, the Beatles were the, a different story because they did all of that. They took over the globe, but nothing like a newspaper. Mm. You know, we have, we were at, we came out at the start of was ourselves and basically like Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift and stuff like that and went at the start of Twitter and, and things like that. And you just, we had that as our vehicle to promote ourselves and stuff like that. And I think, you know, famous people became more accessible because you can, I literally just tweet the fans and we mm. have full on chats there on a daily basis. And that's what it's great for. I can chat away to them and like I consider myself quite like a happy person. And I don't go I would never like say to you, Oh, your hair looks crap, your shirt, you know, I'm, I actually told you I was gonna buy the trousers. So don't go for the trousers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like I would ever say that, but some people feel that they're all, it's okay to do that mm. when they have their phone in their hand. I mean the quicker we can stop that, the better. Mm. Do you find it quite constricting, feeling that people have this accessibility to you? I think at the start, I struggled with it because I was 17, 18, I didn't understand it. I was like, what's all this madness? And rightly so. But now, over the years, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, we're talking about it today, it's like 10 years, you know, since all of this kicked off. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I'm fine with it now. Uh, I've, I've got a good balance, I've good, I've got a great relationship with the fans, I think. I think they'd agree. And yeah, I'm, I'm fine with what I give mm. away and what, yeah, I think they're fine with it too. How do you work on your mental well-being in that sense? I don't know, I try to, personally, I try to live as a normal life as I can. Mm -hmm. I think that's helped. I mean, it sounds ridiculous that I'm even saying this. It makes me sound like I'm crazy or something, but I'll go on the bus or the tube or the, you know, go to the shop and yeah. do rat, like, normal stuff, which sounds like, yeah, obviously you're doing that because you're not you're human. But something there was that was stuff that I couldn't do before, yeah. you know. So and hang around with my mates and be really Irish about it, and quite mm. reserved. And 
keep myself to myself and as I said when work turns on then I'm full steam mm. ahead but um, I think having the, having the normal life and having the friends that I have I think has been huge for me big time I, I think it's great when people start talking about their their struggles or you know the biggest stars in the world are saying that you know we're not we're, we're human yeah I think society has put us on like it like it a pedestal that we're above everyone else the truth is we're just really normal people who do a crazily abnormal job mm. the more the, the quicker we can level that out i think the, you know the more human we make mm. it because it's, it's the truth to be honest we just automatically get treated differently but it's amazing when you do see that human side of of an artist you know like you hear billy eilish talking about her threats or sam smith or you mm. know myself or Whatever, yeah, we all we all have normal issues that can, you know, really connect with people who have the same. Mm. Sometimes I like, oh, really overthink something. Mm. I'm not like generally not an overthinker, but if I feel like it's gonna affect me in some way, like I'll really like think about it for a long time, mm. and not and that'll be that'll be it for a, like a couple of days. Yeah, I just can't stop thinking about that, and then it'll just be gone, and I'll be like, what the f what was that about? Yeah, but for the most part, I'm not, like I'm quite. Those who know me know to be like, quite level and don't let too much phase mm. me. But if the odd one pops up, you're like, it gets you. Yeah. yeah like anything, you know. We all have that issue, we just don't know mm. it. <laughs> Finally, if you could sit the you down, because we were just saying it's been 10 years since you first burst onto into our lives, basically. <laughs> um, what would you say if you could sit the person that started out 10 years ago, and I was that person right here, right now, yeah. What would you want to say to him? What advice would you want to give him? Keep smiling. Because there's one thing like people always say to me, is you, you always look like you're enjoying yourself. That's what people always say to me. Like, you, you were the one that was like, yeah, I could tell he was enjoying himself. That's the way it should be. Because if, like I literally had dreams and stood in mirrors and there's pictures of me at three years of age with guitars and microphones in my hand showing off, you know, that fella's got, you know, that's the guy who dreamt of doing the job that I do now. So the longer I can keep that in my head, the better. But um, yeah, I would just say get ready because it's going to be wild. Do you still feel like you're doing it for that little kid that was oh, singing in the mirror? Well, congrats. You've Thank slayed you. it. And you're going to slay it again <laughs> yes. with the new album. Congrats. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Thank you.